It has been a jam-packed day full of things. So check out all the beautiful, positive words. And it was a, actually a great day and we ended on a very high note. So that makes me happy. So let me go ahead and show you really quickly a preview of our Minecraft world. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Monday, November 4th, 2019. My name is Marielle Sanchez, and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. Today is a little different. I'm not in my classroom today. Today is the professional development day for teachers in my county. So I am at a different location in our district where I'm going to attend a math professional development activity. So I'm excited to see what I learn in today's math workshop, and I get to take you along with me and show you glimpses of what we end up doing today. So here we go. We just got out of the PD and it was an amazing PD talking about the different thinking mathematical practices and the mathematical practices itself. It was awesome. I'll be sure to share some links down below because they also talked about the common core progressions of the standards for math depending on the grade level. So it was really, really informative and I really, really loved it. All right, so now I'm going home to spend time with family, get ready for tomorrow, and I will see you then, which is Tuesday. Hello and welcome to Tuesday. So I'm actually coming to you at the end of the day. It has been a jam-packed day full of things. This morning I had a line of students paying for their field trip, which I believe is tomorrow because it's an in-house field trip and they gave us a schedule, but I haven't seen the schedule yet. I'm thinking it's tomorrow, if not sometime this week. And they were also paying for the elementary fall dance, which is next week. Wednesday and I just finished signing up to be a chaperone for that one from 2 30 to 3 30 the dance goes all the way to I believe 4 30 so yeah the students are very excited about that so I had a line of kids lining up to pay for the dance and for the field trip and then at the same time I had to make sure the class was quiet and then I had a couple of kids coming in to get laptops and then I had a parent call me on the phone it was craziness this morning. And then after that, I had my planning time, but then I had to use it to help a parent that came to pay for their child's field trip and then find the teacher that's in charge of the field trip so I can get additional field trip forms so those children can also participate. It was a mess, a pure mess. But then after that, we had lunch, then we had recess, which we played Minecraft, and then the students had a two-hour writing practice test. So that two hours doesn't come from me, it comes from the state, and that is just the first time that they kind of feel what the two hours feels like so that as we continue to practice this test from time to time as the year progresses, they'll pretty much be able to structure their time wisely and know what is the time limits that they have with this test. So now I have 24 essays to read and score and give them back to the students sometime this week and debrief with them and we're gonna work on revising and editing it. So after I collected all the tests, I actually wanted to show the students a model of what they could do with their planning sheet, which I make sure that I also copy the same one that they will get the same day of the real exam. And I use yellow paper, just like the real one is gonna be yellow so that they can already get used to it. And the day of the test, they'll feel like, oh, we're just taking another writing test like we've done in the past. Something that I've done for the past couple of years. So let me show you that example. So this is how I gave my students a test. And now the one that the district gave to us doesn't have this cover sheet. I just made this cover sheet so it could be a little bit more official. But these are the sources. So I did print the sources out from the document the district gave us. And I will be modeling to the students how to do selective underlining and annotations and coding, which is important. This is an opinion essay, which is why there's pluses. Pluses is for why bike sharing programs will work in my community. And the minuses will be why it will not. And I will be showing this to the students once we debrief. 
So this is my example, and this is the same prompt that we have used in the past couple of years as our baseline for the district. And here it is. I did rewrite the prompt in the format of our FSA, which is the Florida Standards Assessment, so the students can get used to it. And then these are the three line pages that the students use in order to write their essay. They have to write it within the space, not outside the box, and they only have three pages to write their essay. So I wanted to show them an example of what they could have done with their planning sheet. So since this is an opinion prompt, asking them whether a bike sharing program would either work or not work in their community, I did a T-chart. So I told them T-charts are very good for opinion papers because you can do pros and cons. And as you're reading your sources, you can write the evidence that supports each side. And this is just my shorthand so I can know which source that evidence comes from. And then on the back, I can use the spaceship where I have my opinion right here. I'm saying that it will work. And then three reasons why it will work. And these will become my body paragraphs. So three separate body paragraphs. I tell the students to make sure they have enough body paragraphs to be able to fully explain their topic, which goes with the prompt. In this case, it's my opinion that bike sharing programs will work. So that is the essay writing that the students were working on today. Another thing that I just finished doing with the help of Ms. Guzman, who was just visiting in my classroom, I went to Walmart this weekend and I finally bought the mirror. It's like a wall mirror that I'm hanging in my classroom door that leads to the bathroom because I've been wanting a mirror in my room for a couple of reasons. I've been wanting it since like, believe like last year. I wanted to put affirmations around and it's funny that I have been wanting to do that. And just this summer, I saw a lot of teachers posting that they were doing that. I'm like, wow, great minds think alike. So here is my mirror which will also allow me to kind of do an outfit of the day now that I think about it. So here's the mirror it, and I got the gold trimmed one. This one was only $6 at my local Walmart in the mirror section and it's a nice full length mirror. So here's my outfit of the day. It's just a shirt or a blouse that I got from Ross. I have my Lily Pop unicorn lanyard here and I'm just wearing some jeans and my little toe shoes that I got from JCPenney. So yeah, my hair right now is up in a bun because when you're up and about teaching the whole day, hair gets in the way. So I just end up tying it up in a loose like bun. Like I don't even have a scrunchie. I just literally knot it up in my hair. I guess that's the benefits of having curly hair. So yeah, that's my mirror and I'm so happy and I can't wait for the students to see it. I will be putting some little maybe blurbs around the perimeter of it, I'm thinking, so that it can have some nice little affirmations, like I'm worthy, I'm capable, I'm loved. So yeah, thinking about doing that. So yeah, that's all I have to share for you today, Tuesday, and now we're gonna move us on to Wednesday. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday. So today we are doing a couple of different things, and it all starts with a field trip that we have in school this morning. We have the Gabby bus, which I forgot what Gabby stands for. It's an acronym for something, but it's a science bus. And the Gabby bus is coming to our school, and the students are having an in-school field trip where they will learn about pollination and bees and all that good stuff, which is great because this week is also planting week in our school for our school garden bed. I'm still waiting on the the soil and the plants and the seeds that we need in order to start planting but it'll happen sometime this week and we're excited about it so then after school we have a faculty meeting and then during the faculty meeting we're having a Hispanic Heritage luncheon so looking forward to today Wednesday also I wanted to briefly show you my outfit of the day before I let the kids in so today I am wearing my fourth grade crew shirt with my name and I have, no, that's actually the mirror. It has a smudge or something. Okay, and I'm wearing it with jeans and my little ballet flats with a bow on front. So that is my outfit of the day. And I want to show you something that I want to do around this mirror that I kind of mentioned yesterday and I've been wanting to do since last year. And it's this. I used my PowerPoint to create these arrows that will point towards the mirror. And now I'm realizing that some of these arrows need to be pointing that way because they're going to be facing this way. All right, it's a good thing I haven't started laminating yet, but I'm going to maybe turn these facing the opposite way and then laminate these. The laminator is all ready to go, so at least let me run this one through 
And let me fix this one so I can change the paper before I actually start laminating. Same words, it's just the arrow is going to be facing the opposite direction. And I'm still using the pastel rainbow that I use for my schedule. And also my favorite fonts that I use for mostly everything. These are KG fonts. This is KG Always a Good Time. And this is KG Blank Space Solid. So let me show you briefly my schedule so you can see how it's kind of related. I did make sure that I put like a glow effect around the letters in white. And look how nicely those look once they're laminated. The colors pop out a little brighter. This is our schedule and this is not our schedule for today. I have to switch it, but our schedule for today is going to be very different. And today's early release. We do not leave at 305. We leave at 150. We do that every Wednesday. All right, let me work on that. It's time to let the kids in and start our day. So I will check in with you later. Hopefully I can give you a couple of glimpses into our Gabby Bust experience and also a couple of glimpses of our yummy Hispanic Heritage Lunch. So I'll catch you later. It's now the end of the day and from the clips that you saw previously the gabby bus was an amazing event the students really enjoyed first learning about bees and then learning about the whisper mill and how we used it to get flour out of wheat and then they also got a little lesson about how that technology has progressed from the whisper mill to how we use technology to extract that flour from wheat today and then they went into a plant station where they actually got to plant their own seed and take it home with them obviously when we got back to the classroom those little paper cups i was so afraid that they were going to spill them so i just gave them a little ziploc bag a quart size one so that they can put it inside and if it spills it's fine they can just put it back in the cup or plant it at home at a spot that they find for it then they went into the gabby bus itself and they got a tour of it all these natural resources that we get from florida and the jobs and it was really way cool and then of course they had a little store where they got to shop if they wanted to get any souvenirs or any little goodies that they wanted we got back into class and we watched a bill nye the science guy video on plants and i was able to also find a quiz that went along with the video so this is a quiz on plants and don't mind my doodles that's what i do sometimes since i had already kind of answered it as i was watching the video for the second time with the students i started like doodling it but it's great because the information that they were able to listen to in the video is what the quiz actually assessed them on which was also information that we sort of also got from the gabby bus experience as well we also had a great conversation about our FSA scores, which is our Florida Standards Assessment, and I passed back their student data folder so that they can see their scores. We talked about the scale scores and their goals for this year, so that was great as well. And we ended the day by going over our brain bins, which the students are going to use tomorrow. I'll go over brain bins a little bit more later. I'm hoping I can create a standalone video where I talk about brain bins and how I plan to incorporate them into my classroom. But for now, this is how they look. And I do have to make like little circle labels so that I can label each bin as brain bin one, brain bin two, etc. So these are our brain bins and you know me, I like to color code everything and because I have colored groups, I thought this would be a great idea. I have like three of the photo containers that come in that plastic container from Michaels and that's why I was able to get all these colors. 
to go along with each team. And in each bin, there's five different cases so that there's one per student. But I told them that they could actually combine them if they are building and they need to be able to put them back together afterwards. I do have a bookshelf by the door over there. I'm thinking I could probably fit them in there to store them away when the students are not using them. And just to give you a brief overview, I plan to have every morning the students come in, they will have one of these bins at their group and they can go ahead and either have a free build or I will show a STEM challenge on the board on something that I am challenging them to build. Now that's gonna be for only the first 15 minutes of the day, which is from 8.20 to 8.35. Our school day starts at 8.35. So that gives them about 15 minutes as soon as they come in to just work on it. So it's not gonna be anything elaborate, but something that is a definitely great way to start their morning. All right, I'm actually gonna quickly head out to the faculty meeting and I will see you afterwards. I got my iPad with me. Hello everyone, I am back from the faculty meeting and that delicious Hispanic Heritage Luncheon. I mean, that arroz con pollo was super, super yummy. And so was the cheesecake that I grabbed, so creamy. And I shared it, of course, with my son and my beautiful like daughter, because she's kind of like my daughter. I call her my little daughter sometimes, nanny. <laughs> they're right there but um yeah so I, I got back into the classroom and the rest of the meeting was mostly about voting for teacher of the year and rookie teacher of the year so one of our teachers got voted as teacher of the year and our rookie teacher of the year is miss guzman so it's so awesome i wanted to see if she was still here so she could at least you know show up on the vlog and give a little reaction of how she felt she was so like let's just say that she was in the middle of asking for my bottle caps because she's collecting bottle caps for another teacher that's collecting bottle caps and in the middle of her asking for the bottle caps they announced that she was the rookie teacher of the year and she's like wait what's going on what did they say <laughs> and she had just gotten it, so it was really cool. So another thing that I wanted to show you before I went to the faculty meeting was the mirror with the arrows that I showed you this morning that I was making, so let me show you now. So check out all the beautiful positive words that are on the little arrows and that are pointing towards a person that is looking at the mirror. In this case, it's me. So yeah, as the students can stand here, they can look at the positive words and just remind themselves that these are all the things that they are so that they have really good reminders every day. I am thinking of putting a little sign up here, maybe something like positive reflections, get it? It's like a little play on the word reflection, it's a pun, but yeah, looks very, very nice. All right, so let me check really quickly if Ms. Guzman is here because I do have to leave to go to an appointment, but I wanted her to at least come on the camera really quickly. So let's see if she's still here. <laughs> okay, she's still in her room. She's gonna come and open the door. There she Hi. is! <laughs> Our new rookie teacher of the year. I had to come and have you at least be in the Thank video because, you. you know, they're going to be excited I know. to know. I really was not expecting it at all, but I'm super happy and I'm humbled by it. She is truly humbled by it and I'm so, so happy for her. Thank well, you. well, well deserved. Thank you. So excited. For your Yay. support. Always here for you, friend. Always Thank here for you. you. <laughs> all right, guys. Bye. All right. I really had to do that because I know that you all will have been so happy for her because you followed her journey as a student teacher and now she's a full-time teacher and she got her first ever recognition as a rookie teacher of the year so that is super exciting all right so that is all i have to share with you today for wednesday and now we're going to move us on to thursday
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Thursday. So today we are going to try and catch up on a couple of different things that we haven't been able to do because of different things that have happened, including the field trip from yesterday, the in-school field trip. But I am ready to get caught up on all those things. Today we do have computers this afternoon after lunch. After lunch we have science, and then after that we have computers so the students can work on their iReady and Reflex math. And I just have to be honest and say that right now I just feel like like kind of down my mood is really affected and I just need to focus on self-care especially this afternoon so I will not be staying late today I need to leave right after school and just rest relax maybe take a nap maybe watch a movie or a show I need to catch up on something maybe go out for a nice walk around the block before it gets dark since now the time has changed and it gets really dark around 6 p.m. and soon it's gonna be really dark around 5 30 p.m. so yeah that's what you get with the fall time change all right I wanted to quickly show you my outfit of the day so today I am just wearing a pink blouse with some dark gray pants and my open toed shoes that I got from JCPenney. I also, I forgot to show this yesterday, but I do have my donuts Lily Pop lanyard. So that is my little outfit of the day. All right, so I'm just gonna continue with my day and I'll be sure to share with you a few highlights of today along with my reflection. One thing is this morning I came in and I started to reorganize the classroom and I had to kind of finish after I let the students in this morning, I had them all sit towards the front of the room while I finished. I was trying to do clusters that were separated, but there's just not a lot of space in the classroom. I know my classroom looks very big, but I mean, it's bigger than the classrooms on the west side of the school. All the classrooms on this side of the school are. But it just, with 25 desks, I can't really put clusters of groups of desks separate from each other so i went back to an old setup that i had a couple weeks ago and this is the setup so i have these two teams kind of connected i do have this one in the middle by itself and those other two teams are also connected so yeah and i also forgot to tell you that this is where i am storing the morning tubs or my brain bins actually i'm going to change the name to brain bins and this morning, the students had an opportunity to actually engage with those STEM building toys, and they were just busy building all sorts of things from the little mini Jenga blocks to the plastic building blocks that I got from Target to the brain flakes and also the other magnetic toys. We have two different magnetic toys that the students were using to build. So that was a lot of fun for them. And that's pretty much how their morning started. And yeah, I forgot to say I'm coming to you at lunch. <laughs> and right now they are in lunch after they were able to explore those STEM building toys, they went to art. So now when they come back from lunch, we're going to tackle some science and hopefully I can squeeze in a couple of other math practice because I need them to keep practicing those divisions before we go to the computer lab. And then we are starting a new wonders unit this afternoon. I'm trying to catch up on that as well. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing this afternoon and we're gonna end the day with social studies. They're going to do a last minute review of the regions of the United States and the characteristics of each region before they take that test. All right, so I will check in with you at the end of the day. It's now the end of the day and I made it through the entire day. And actually I ended on a really great note. So the last little clips, which were kind of brief that I showed you were the students working on a math problem. Now the PD that I went on Monday on math kind of mentioned how Go Math usually has really good problems for the kids to solve and do the mathematical thinking and the discourse and trying to find solutions to it and talking it out. But the problem with Go Math in those unlocking the problems is that they give the students the answer. So it defeats the purpose of having them try to figure out what the answer is. So what I ended up doing today is I gave each team a white sheet of construction paper and I gave them a problem. First, I modeled a problem for them, which I'll show you now. And I showed them the expectations of the activity. And then I gave them a different problem and had them work as a team in order to find a solution to it and really outline what each step is and what each number represented. Now, it was an amazing activity because I did see them struggling at times, but we were working through getting past those struggles, persevering, trying to find a different solution. I had 
one team, which was an amazing thing that happened, where one girl said, no, we need to do this first. And the other student said, no, we need to do this first. And I said, you know what? I don't think either of you is wrong. Why don't you go ahead and work out the problem individually and see if you come up with the same answer? And they did, which is the beauty of this activity, which was an amazing lesson for all of them to learn that in math, there are multiple ways of getting the answer as long as you can explain it and really show how you got it. So let me show you the example that I gave to the kids before they got started. So this was the example that I first gave them. And I've been working on outlining it in black. As you can see, part of this is still in pencil. But we started with the problem, and then I modeled how to use the cube strategy to circle the important numbers, underline the question, box in our math action words, and then the E in cubes is to actually evaluate the next steps. So when it came to the steps, I wanted the students to number the steps and tell me what they needed to do first, second, etc., and then actually solve that part of the problem. And then I wanted them to draw me a picture of the solution to the problem, however the picture needed to be, depending on what the problem was. In this case, we were working with bags of ears of corn, so I drew bags showing the three ears of corn in each bag. And then at the end, was very important, I needed them to really write the answer to the word problem question in a complete sentence, making sure that they explained what each number represented. So the answer is three, but what does three represent? So that's what was important with this. On the back is where I wrote their problem. So this is the problem they were working with. So for the example that I just talked about, one student said, no, we should multiply 64 times two first and then divide by eight. And another student was saying the opposite. So they were trying to figure out which way to get it done first. And we were able to still get the same answer to the problem, which was really interesting and it was a really great lesson for the students as well. So this is a demonstration of how you can take a math lesson and not necessarily need to open your math textbook. The students were engaged in problem solving. They were engaged in the concept that we were currently working with, which is division. They were also engaged in math talk and math discourse, and they didn't wanna stop. When it was time to pack up and go home for the day, they didn't want to go. So that's always a good sign. All right, so other than that, we were working with our computer time. They were doing their iReady time when we went to the computer lab and they were finishing their soil profile. Let me show you my completed example and then maybe I can show you a sneak peek of some of the ones the students were completing. So as part of our science lesson and learning about the types of rock and minerals and soil, which they are all connected, I needed the students to create a diagram of a soil profile to be able to label all the four layers of soil, so topsoil, subsoil, parent material, and bedrock, and then be able to go ahead and give me details of each. So this is the one that I completed, and I made sure to tell them that they also need to fully color it, including the background. I'm very big on that, people. So let me show you some of the student creations. So here are some examples of the soil profile that the students were creating. And I really like to make sure that I incorporate art and creative expression whenever we are doing any type of learning. So yeah, I'm very happy with the creation that they were working with when it comes to understanding the soil profile and the different layers and how they're all kind of connected. And also it was interesting to learn that the bedrock, the minerals that are found in the bedrock, are responsible for determining the type of soil you're going to have above. So that was pretty cool. And yeah, these are just some of the examples that the students created. All right, so that's all that I have for you for today, Thursday. I know this morning my mood wasn't so great. It's still not 100%, but I'm glad that I made it through the day and it was a, actually a great day and we ended on a very high note. So that makes me happy. All right, so now we're gonna move us on to Friday. Hello everyone and welcome to Friday. I'm actually coming to you at the end of the day to let you know how our day went, our highlights for today. So let's start with what we did first thing this morning. 
The students had their day two this week of working with their brain bins and building. It was, again, a free build. After that, they were working on completing their math posters for the word problems that I gave them yesterday. And I actually finished coloring my example one so I could show them my expectations for their posters. Now, a lot of them didn't finish completely, but they did a great job, and I'm glad that they enjoyed the activity. So let me show you my completed example. This is the same poster that I showed you yesterday. It's just that it's been completely colored in. That is the problem with the cube strategy already outlining the important numbers, the question, the action words, the first step, the second step up here, and a pictorial representation of the answer to the problem along with the sentence at the end that answers that problem. So that is my completed example. And these are some of the completed examples by the students. Here's another one. And another one, even if they didn't finish coloring, is completely fine. And here's another one. And here's the last one. After that, I went ahead and I introduced the CER strategy, which stands for Claim, Evidence, and Reasoning. It is a strategy used in science, but it can also be applied to math, reading, and writing. So what I did is I just gave them a half sheet of paper with a problem. And before I did that, I showed them my example so that they could see my expectations for them completing that particular problem. This was the example problem that I showed them as I was going over my expectations for this particular problem. Our cube strategy, circle, underline, box, steps to solve the problem and then check and solve and or solve and check. So we went ahead and did cubes together. I then went to the back, which I had them do the same thing when they did theirs, and outline each step to solve the problem, and make sure they explain what each number represents and gave their answer. And then they could answer what is the answer, that's the claim. The evidence is how did you do the math and explain. And then the reasoning, why did you do the math this way? So this is the problem that I gave to them, and this is just my example. I haven't shown them this yet. I collected all their papers, and next week I'll make sure to go over this one. This one was actually a two-step problem. The previous one was a three-step problem, but it's the same thing. So they will show the steps in the back, and then in the front they will write their answer, their evidence, and their reasoning behind that strategy that they used. So that is CER for our math problem solving strategies. After that, we went ahead and continued on with our day. We did have recess today and because we didn't have Spanish today, they ended up having a little bit extra recess where we went ahead and played in our Minecraft world, which I wanted to show you a brief overview of what it looks like in a moment before I close the vlog for this week. I know one of my subscribers had asked me if I could kind of show a preview of the world, so I will give you a little glimpse into it. And then we went ahead and worked on our reading today. So we were working on the forces in motion and going over the weekly opener video, the main selection, we went over vocabulary, not the main selection, we were doing the shared read, which is the first selection that we do in Wonders, and had a really great discussion about Isaac Newton. I went ahead and I showed them a video on gravity from vocabulary, and this is a little clip of that. Everybody jump, you come back down Every time you jump, you land back on the ground Gravity pulls you towards the earth with a force And it's why the planets all stick together on the floor the students really enjoyed that video. And of course, at the end of the lesson, I also showed another vocabulary video on cause and effect, which is the comprehension skill that we are working on in this particular unit. So on Fridays, we usually don't have time for science, but because it was embedded within our reading, that was a plus. We didn't have time for social studies today, so that will be pushed over to next week. So let me go ahead and show you really quickly a preview of our Minecraft world and then I'll be closing off the vlog. So this is how my Minecraft EDU screen looks like. So I'm just gonna click on play. I'm gonna go to my world. I do have a copy of my world in case something goes wonky or wrong. I could restart and this is our current world. And what we do is I show it on my Promethean board and the kids kind of turn off the lights and they're on their devices and then I give them the join code by just going here and start hosting, I confirm, and then it randomly selects a join code. The students type that into their computers and then they can join the world. 
So right now I'm just gonna give you an overview of the world. And I'm actually on creative. The students are not in creative. The students are actually in survival. But being in creative allows me to do a couple of different things. So let me just go ahead and fly so I can give you an overview. This is our village. And this big house is my main base. And that is my son's house right there. He has a house in our world. We have our animal farm over here. We have the cows, the sheep, the pigs, and the chicken. And of course, there are some random iron golems there. Uh, that's interesting. And there's a sheep with the chickens. Um, I guess it naturally spawned in there. And behind the animals, I am actually growing food that actually will feed the animals so we can have more animals. On this side over here, we have a actual farm where we are growing carrots and potatoes and a little bit of wheat, but not that much. Over here, we have a little mini ocean biome where the kids can actually fish. And we named some of the fish that are in here. These are not available for the kids to actually catch. Actually, in Minecraft, when you fish, you don't catch the fish that you see swimming in the water. You just randomly catch different things. And we named this the Peaceful Pond. And this is our little garden there. And this is the rest of the village over here. But as you can see, with the houses, each student has a house. And the houses are differentiated by the color of the flowers. So right here, and also the color of the beds. Right here, these five houses are the magenta houses. And over here, we have five houses that are the green houses and five houses that are the blue. And on the first row, <laughs> we see a funny thing here. This is a horse that is upside down. You can actually do this with any characters in Minecraft by naming them dinner bone and that makes them be upside down and the sheep is in rainbow color one of the students actually did that this is his horse and his sheep but these are the orange houses there's five of them and there's five red houses now in the neighborhood we also have a pool so we have two pools we have one here and one on the opposite end over there we also have a few parks on either end so we have two parks over here with a fountain and two parks on the other side. Now, the village is fully enclosed in a stone fence with iron doors, so no one can get in or out unless they push the buttons there. We have a strip mine over there and a mine over here as well, which is enter at your own risk. And we have our nether portal right over there. We still have some jack-o'-lanterns around because the kids wanted to decorate the village for Halloween, and we did just that. So yeah, this is our nether portal right here, and I decorated it with a hedge and some lamps. I basically designed the village along with my son. He did the prototype for the homes of the kids. Let me just take you inside one of the homes so you can kind of see what's inside. We do have some ender chests also at different points of the village, so the children have access to their inventory that they wanna keep hidden from everybody else. But each home comes with a bed, some lanterns on little tree stumps, a furnace, a crafting table, and a chest that was filled with a lot of different things, including iron armor, iron weapons, and tools, a compass so they find their way, a boat, some coal, food so they have something to eat. So yeah, all the kids had that given to them as part of their inventory when they joined the world and they all have their names right outside the house so some of them opted for writing place or home or cottage so that is pretty much and this is one of our friends that has many many pets so these are all her cats and she has some dogs in here too yeah she is loving her animals so all of them are sitting in here are so cute yeah lots of doggos and kitties but yeah, that's pretty much our village, and now it's getting dark in the town, but that's what it is. Let me show you a little bit about my house here, and we also named the streets, and that sign is just for my house, and they can come through invitation only, <laughs> and these are my cats, in case. I haven't named all of them. I've only named one. I believe, where's Ginger? Ginger is over here. Yeah, that's Ginger. So this is my home, 
and that is my kitchen. Well, I made it be like a kitchen. So the crafting table acts like a stove. This is this furnace, and this is a cauldron with water. And I can actually look out from my home, and I do have a wraparound balcony that goes all over the house. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. And my son actually helped make um, this beacon rainbow with the different color glass panes. And back here, you see a road, it's kind of lit. This road was built so that the students can have an easy way of finding one of the nearby villages. And let me show you something cool that I have been working on from this village. I kind of finished it off with the students today. So we were working on connecting this village to another sand village that is kind of far away. And this is a roller coaster that I made. And right here, you can right click on the button and it brings out a mine cart. You can get in and if you click on the lever, it takes you on a roller coaster ride through this mesa biome all the way to the desert village that is on the other side. So the kids think that this is the coolest thing ever and they love riding it to the village. Right now it's nighttime, which is why you have all the creepy crawlies and we're stuck because the kids kind of left <laughs> those mine carts there. So yeah, now we're stuck. I would need to get a lever to kind of activate the rails again, but you get the idea. So that is, oh, there's a creeper over there. Please don't blow up my railroad. All right, so that is pretty much, let me break this mine cart so it's not in the way. Oh, oh, now we're going. Okay, I guess we're going. All right, just get out and get back in. So, so you can kind of see how far this goes. It's kind of pretty far. But right now I'm building another track alongside it. So we have one way going to the sand village and then one way coming back. That way, if somebody is coming back, we don't bump into each other and go opposite ways. So that's what I'm working on right now. I did not finish. As you can see, the track on the other side stops right there before we get over this canyon. But once we get over this canyon, the, you should see the village almost in the distance. We're going down. We're going to go over some water. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. And the students um, really love riding this little roller coaster from the other village by our, uh, by our little town to here it is, the sand village. And we're gonna get off in a moment. And there's another mine cart there. Oh, got rid of it. So yeah, this is the other village. So you can see, and that is a little preview of our little Minecraft world and what the students look forward to every time we have recess. All right, so that's all I have for you for this week. And I hope that you enjoy coming along with us for this four day school week. Well, I kind of included Monday so you could see what we did in our teacher planning day. Now we're gonna have a nice three day weekend with Veterans Day on Monday. So another four day school week next week. Then we have a five day school week, but that's okay because after that is Thanksgiving week. I know already. It's like this year has said goodbye. It said hello and now it's saying goodbye. <laughs> All right, so thank you for coming along with me. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day, and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.